So I was really fortunate the other day to be given a gift from my sister who upgraded her phone. Uh, she allowed me to have her old phone, which uh, gives me a new toy to play with and uh, something that we can hopefully use to make some useful videos here uh, for you guys to see how some things are done. One of the uh, requests that I get a lot or one of the questions that come up a lot is how to build not just a device tree from scratch but specifically how to do that first step of building team win recovery project for a device that doesn't have it yet and uh, we uh, we built a device tree from scratch already in a video series here and we did that with the blue life one x2 and uh, we call that the blocks 2 and that device though already had a team win recovery project uh, twerp recovery built for it. So I want to uh, work with a device that has never had a twerp built for it that I know of. And so I did some extensive research on this device and I could not find this device with a team win recovery project. Now I found some very similar devices that had a team win recovery project and actually I was able to edit one and flash it to this phone and uh, somewhat make it work and so that will be a good uh, guideline or a good ground uh, that we can work from as far as something to borrow from so we kinda have an idea of what we're going for what our goal is but uh, so we do have um, this device the blue life XL and to the best of my knowledge uh, I could not find a team win recovery project um, download for it. Now I did I did find a video if you try to uh, uh, search it with DuckDuckGo or Google or something like that. Uh, I did find a video that said they had one and if you click on it I just end up getting all sorts of garbage. So do be careful when you're looking around out there. Uh, go with trusted sources. Places like XDA, um, Android File Host, uh, or a few of those kind of things. You know something a little more reputable than uh, maybe somebody's, uh, you know, Google box or Dropbox or whatever, you know, unless you know them from XDA or something like that. Not saying that that necessarily makes it perfect, but just uh, a better um, option than just going with some random link from a YouTube video. So, <laughs> and I say that. And it's kind of funny because this is a YouTube video. Anyways, so moving on, uh, the Blue Life XL. What's funny about the Blue Life XL and a lot of blue phones, and I've mentioned this before with the Blocks 2, is you have to be really careful with blue phones. What happens with blue phones is they often make more than one of the exact same model with the exact same name that does not have the exact same hardware so that is really confusing notice we have this blue life XL and it says that it's got a 5.5 inch screen 720 by 1280 pixels it's got 13 megapixel camera with 1080p and it's got 2 gigabytes of RAM and a MediaTek MT 6592M processor or system on a chip and uh, and so I'm like oh great I wanted to try a MediaTek phone out anyways so this would be great uh, if you look down here in the further description though, you'll see under chipset you have that MediaTek and then you also have this Qualcomm Snapdragon 410. Well that's odd, you can't have both, I mean theoretically I guess you could, but phones don't get made with more than one chipset in them, that's really unusual. And then it says it's an octa-core or an 8-core 1.4 gigahertz followed by then saying no it's it's a quad core or four core 1.2 gigahertz phone well this is getting really confusing now which which is it and the gpu it's a it's a mali 450 mp4 uh no no it, it's an adreno 306 wait a minute my head's starting to hurt now right and unfortunately this is a problem i have run into lots of times with blue phones i don't run into this problem with any other manufacturer uh, to date now there could be some out there that also have this problem but i haven't run into this problem with this with any other manufacturer than blue and that is that blue will build a phone with one set of chipset in it or one set of hardware in it and then they'll make a new production line of the same phone same name same case same look 
but they'll change the system on a chip in it or some other hardware uh, portion of it and that makes it very very difficult to build for so in this case I've already checked the phone that I have in actuality while there's no way I can tell by my knowledge from the label itself or from the the name of it or anything like that but to, the, to my knowledge I've checked this phone itself by looking on the phone itself and it is actually the Qualcomm Snapdragon 410 which is is good I like Snapdragon uh, processors they're good processors I was kind of hoping for MediaTek so that way we could do a MediaTek video that would be a lot of fun um, but it has the Snapdragon 410 which is actually I think a superior processor to the MediaTek one um, in my personal opinion everybody's entitled to their own but uh, so so this is what we have to work with the big thing that I want to point out here just like in every video series that we start where we're doing something from scratch research research is really important and so we've looked at the Snapdragon 410 before for another phone if you recall the Blocks 2 also has the Snapdragon 410 processor. So that's really handy, but it doesn't necessarily mean that we can just copy and paste from the Blocks 2, but it definitely gives us a good baseline to work from. There's actually a lot of uh, phones that are closer to it that we're going to be using along the way. But I do just want to show you, you know, GPU is that Adreno 306, so that helps clear up, well, which GPU is it? I know I have the Snapdragon processor, so I know I have the 306 Adreno GPU. Um, we know that it is uh, uh, lots of information about the cellular, the Wi-Fi, the Bluetooth, um, GPS and location. Um, can support up to a 13.5 megapixel camera, which fits with our 13 megapixel camera that they chose. Um, what else do we have here? So lots of lots of good information that we can see here uh, when you just do a little research on that Snapdragon 410 processor. Uh, also, uh, we're going to be building, of course, Team Win Recovery Project first because this phone I could not find any for it. Uh, since we're going to be building that, we're going to be working with that minimal manifest twerp. We've used this before, and I just want to touch on it again. We're going to be building that minimal manifest twerp uh, team and recovery project and we'll go through the whole setup again here um, in uh, in another video but I just wanted to show that to you that's what we're going to be building um, there's two variants there's the Omni variant and there's the lineage OS variant now the lineage OS variant only does uh, nugget and the uh, Omni version uh, of the minimals can go back all the way to 4.4. In this case we need 5.1 and the reason we need 5.1 is this phone was originally released with Android 5.1 and that's important because we're going to be stealing the kernel out of the phone. We're going to also try to find the kernel source but but we're going to be stealing the kernel out of the phone as well because I want to show how we can utilize a kernel that's already built to do something like building Team Win Recovery Project and so um, hopefully that will be something that we can do successfully if not we'll also be looking at the source but either way the source or the actual kernel from the phone is written for Android 5.1 and so that's uh, going to be the easiest to build for because it already has all the set um, functions that it needs to interface with Android 5.1 that they utilize when building Team Win Recovery Project so that's uh, that's our goal that's what we're going to be doing we're going to be trying to build Team Win Recovery Project for a new device from scratch and uh, I really hope you enjoy this series I hope that uh, you're as excited as I am and uh, I really hope that it's successful in the end so that way um, we have something useful so stay tuned and uh, looking forward to the journey with you